In the last 20 years, we witnessed a growing attention to her Jewish heritage in European countries. There are days of Jewish culture that attract many people. There are many new Jewish museums and exhibitions on Jewish topics. And also, there are many local initiatives for preservation of former synagogues and Jewish cemeteries. Today, 70 years after the Shoah, one may say that Jewish heritage is becoming an integral part of European heritage, and many Europeans consider Jewish monuments as belonging to their own history and culture. The notion of shared heritage became important in the contemporary European discourse. If we look to the eastern part of Europe, to the areas that once comprised the Soviet Union, we will discover a completely different picture. In the USSR, the level of destruction of Jewish heritage was tremendous. In the interwar period, it was caused by the Bolshevik struggle against, uh, against religion and their desire to create a new socialist society. Thousands of churches, mosques, Buddhist temples, as well as synagogues were closed by the Bolsheviks. Some buildings, especially churches, were immediately demolished in order to remove them from the cityscape of the Soviet cities. Others were assigned to secular needs. The fate of synagogues in the interwar USSR was very similar to that of other buildings uh, uh, belonging to other religions. Judaism was persecuted in the same degree as Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. The Second World War caused enormous destruction to the uh, western areas of the USSR. Many buildings, among them synagogues, were damaged. Some of them were raised down after the war, while others were restored. Many important synagogues were gone in the late 1940s, but it's usually said that they were destroyed during the war. For now, it's not clear which factors caused the preservation of some buildings and complete demolition of others. In several cases, however, it's obvious that the decision to raise down a 17th century synagogue like the Great Synagogue of Vilnius was dictated by the wish to eliminate the memory of Jews from the city map and cityscape. The atmosphere of state anti-Semitism in the post-war USSR and the marginalization of all Jewish topics in the Soviet uh, discourse made the demolition of Jewish heritage easier. However, there was no central plan for the elimination of Jewish buildings. Several prominent synagogues in Belarus and Ukraine were listed as protected monuments, and some of them even underwent restoration. The destruction of Jewish heritage must be viewed in the framework of general Soviet attitude to historical buildings, which was not very favorable, to put it gently. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, the successor states chose different paths to future development, which are clearly seen in the prevailing attitude toward Jewish heritage. In those countries, they tended to overcome their Soviet experience and sought to join the European Union, like Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, Jewish buildings gradually became part of the local heritage and have been absorbed into the local cultural historical narrative. Usually, this happened in the context of copying with the Shoah implications. In those states, national heritage authorities and municipalities along with Jewish organizations, have taken an active role in restoring Jewish historical monuments and converting them into cultural uh, facilities for all, which in the same time are the places of Jewish memory. The availability of uh, European Union money makes this process easier, but usually there is a grassroots initiative for such restoration projects. In other post-Soviet countries, however, the situation is very different. Although in some of them, like in Ukraine, the rejection of the Soviet past have been solemnly proclaimed, the perceptions of the most of the local people have not changed significantly, and few of them have internalized contemporary European values. The basis for dealing with former synagogues in those countries is religious. It means that religious communities are entitled to claim those buildings and to use them for religious ceremonies. Usually, they can alter the buildings as they please without the involvement of heritage authorities. The nominating discourse is not the memorialization of a monument, but the restoration of its religious value. Therefore, those former synagogues that are not claimed by communities are left to deteriorate and collapse.
The sad fact is that even those few synagogues that were listed as protected monuments in the Soviet era stand today, 30 years later, in exactly the same ruinous shape as they were in 1991. The striking example is the wooden synagogue of Kansk in Siberia, one of about 20 or 25 wooden synagogues preserved in entire Europe. Three years ago, it was dismantled for firewood. In contemporary Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and Moldova, Jewish monuments are not perceived as part of local Jewish history and culture that should be preserved for the benefits of the entire population. They are seen as an exclusive Jewish issue, as buildings belonging to Jews who must care for them. Some important synagogues in Ukraine were recently restored, but the restoration was initiated and conducted by Jewish actors, local individuals or international organizations. It seems that the only exception is the creation of the space of synagogues in Lviv, a project that was endorsed by the city authorities. Those Jews who deal with the renovation of synagogues, especially religious Orthodox Jews, also do not consider this building to be the shared heritage with the locals, and they feel quite confident in altering them according uh, to their perceptions. Only very small segments of non-Jewish societies usually relatively young and Europeanized, are interested in Jewish heritage and perceive it as part of local history. In other words, the state authorities, the majority of local non-Jewish population, as well as Jewish religious communities, uh, local communities, in most post-Soviet countries, reject the idea of shared heritage. For them, Jewish heritage remain, remains a Jewish matter to be dealt with by the Jews.